Aloha, y'all. This is William, and we'll be talking about computers and gaming. Ooh, cool, man. And then also computers in education. And uh, what else? Law enforcement, uh, even things like farming. Man, go figure. Computers everywhere, yeah. Okay, so we'll jump into our, our first slide here, and we're going to talk a bit about the uh, computers and... Um, and gaming here. So let's see here. Uh, so I know a lot of uh, computer science students, they like playing the computer games and just people in general. But you know, you got computer skills now, so you might want to think about a job in the, in the gaming uh, industry. And uh, you know, you might design a new game. Or uh, what else could you do? You could write the computer code. If you're more into coding, you can do that. Um, then the more artistic side, you can do 3D graphics, animation, um, that kind of thing with the games. And then, hey, you need someone to test the games as well, right? So you can be a game tester too. So um, kind of think about those things when you're thinking about a future career. And let's see what else we have. So as y'all know, we have computers and education, right? So if you're in this online class, I assume you know this. And then our course management software uh, is called Laulima. And we do all kind of stuff. So we got uh, all the teaching materials on there for y'all. What else? Uh, we can turn your assignments through Laulima. We can do uh, check your grades, uh, take exams, quizzes, that kind of thing. And then also the online discussion boards. So I want to kind of make an appeal now. Uh, make sure you post the online discussion boards. So that's a good way to uh, make contact with other people in our class. I know if it's a face-to-face -face class, you can just kind of you know, look over and say, hey, what's up? But the online, uh, the way we do that is with discussion boards. So please, if you have questions for me or uh, your, your instructor or even just other students, or maybe you find something cool, a cool article about computers and technology, and you want to post that, that's great. So uh, we really want to encourage you to post the discussion board on La Lima and uh, you know, make an online community. So, All right, so let's mosey on to the next uh, part here. And um, now, I, you know, of course, you have the World Wide Web, and we got lots and lots of stuff out there we can use uh, for education. And uh, one thing, what? We can do field trips, right? We can go, say, to a museum website, uh, has works of art and, and other collections like that. Then, two, uh, we have these MOOCs, so massive open online courses. So you got all these people, lots and lots of students, you know, thousands of students maybe. Um, you know, taking a course, a lot of times it's free or there's some kind of minimum cost to it. So this is kind of the latest thing these days in education or online education. So you can check into those kind of things. Then I uh, get a little bit uh, more specific here, um, some websites that we can check out uh, for education. A big one is the Khan Academy. Uh, they have uh, instructional videos and, and other tools for education on this website. Um, so all kind of topics on there. And uh, one more general is, is the TED, um, TED.com. So I don't know if you all have seen that, but a lot of inspirational presentations. They call it Ideas Worth Spreading. So they try to have the, the newest and the greatest ideas. Some are kind of unusual, and, and, and some are just, wow, there's cool things to, to think and learn about. And you go to NASA, they have a website with all kind of images and then also other software that's related to learning different topics. Um, so yeah, so I really recommend you guys uh, check out uh, those websites, um, you know, especially the TED Talk. So it's, it's interesting, kind of see the talk of the day or maybe there's some topic that you're interested in, you want to know the latest research or latest uh, thinking on that. Um, Really, go, go check it out. It's pretty cool. Okay, so let's let's mosey on a bit, and uh, our next topic here is uh, homes. Okay, homes and computers. 
So if you've got a high-tech home, you might have some things like this in there, or maybe know someone that has this kind of stuff. Of course, their music, right? Maybe TV. Um, my parents always call it the clicker, but all, you know, there's always uh, uh, all these different um, systems we have to control, all the way from lighting and cooling and heating, um, and then also appliances as well. You know, microwaves, say for example, you can program a microwave, so that's also has a computer in it. Uh, then home security systems are are big lately. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let's see what else we got here at home. So, um, just thinking too about you know at your house. Well, maybe, maybe you just have a computer or a laptop. Yeah, so you really got to think about things, uh, malicious software, um, you know, people, you know, sending um, spam or, or or some kind of. A lot of times they send email. They try to convince you to log in to your bank when it's really not your bank, right? So. As far as the identity theft goes, they might get you know different parts of your identity and take out a loan in your name. Uh, that's that's probably not too good for your finances. And just on the World Wide Web, you know, looking around for a reliable information and how do you know if it's reliable or not? And then also say your hardware or software, the, the troubleshooting. So you have things like that that you need to think about if you have a computer at home. Okay. So, yeah, you might not be that high tech. You might not have all these gadgets and remote controls and all that, but at least uh, make sure you're on top of the computer uh, literacy and, and you know um, how to be safe. Uh, I have also virus software to protect against viruses. I think, I think the worst thing I saw was one where you know, it pops up and it says, hey, you got a virus, click here to stop it. And then that, that is the virus, you know. So then you click there and then psh, um, you're in trouble, yeah. So make sure. Uh, you recognize the virus software that, that, that you're using. Okay, cool. Let's uh, mosey on a bit and see what we have next here. And um, even law enforcement, I don't know if you noticed, but you know most uh, police cars have a computer in there. Um, they can you know do auto, uh, checks right away on your license. Plate, uh, but also other things more advanced. You know, maybe they'll, they, they, when they're doing um, what investigation. You know, for example, they can do reconstruct a uh, face from a skull. Uh, all these databases they have a lot of data with related crimes, uh, possible suspects, uh, that kind of thing. Um, forensics. You know, they can get to someone's laptop and go through it, and and you'll be amazed at what's stored on your laptop. They can tell. You know what sites you've been looking at, or what uh, what folders you've been opening, what what um, documents you've been looking at on your computer, and even saying, well, maybe they can forecast criminal activity. Uh, maybe it gets too hot, and there's a rise in stealing uh, air conditioners or something like that. But okay, so we can do that kind of things with computers. And I kind of said about the license plate check. Yeah, most uh, police cars have a laptop where they can just plug in that plate and then see what's going on with that car, yeah. Okay, so courtrooms, uh, a lot of the documents now are online with the government, so it helps with the access. You know, you got surveillance cameras to record the crimes, uh, you might animate the crime scenes, that kind of thing. Um, legal libraries also help with access, so, you know, a lot easier to access things. Then uh, farming, so you might think, hey, farming? Well, they got computers with farming, help to grow plants or something. Okay, well, yeah, it's, it's big business now, y'all. So a lot of companies just need uh, computers, keep track of business information, uh, see what sells, what doesn't sell, and you know, make um, decisions based on that with what they need to grow more or less of. What else? I, if y'all have heard of the radio frequency uh, like ID tags, so they use these. Uh, you can put them inside a, an animal and, and kind of keep track of where they're at. Um, even Humane Society uses that to keep track of, of, of animals that that um, people adopt. And then sensors for the crops. Uh, I think a common example is the cranberries. Um, they got sensors, and they're trying to see oh if it 
it gets too cold and freezes. Okay, you kind of think, well, if it gets too cold and freezes, or it gets, the temperature gets below the freezing point, what should you do with crops? Okay, well, you actually put water on the crops. Okay, so you put water on the crops, water freezes, and that keeps the crops at that temperature and it prevents the crop from getting, uh, for instance, fruit or vegetables or whatever from getting even colder and, uh, you know, ruining the crop. So pretty crazy uh, that you would put water and freeze it to help it from not getting colder, but that's what they do. So again, we got computers with sensors that can do that kind of thing. All right, so, so uh, those are some of the you know, things with computers and uh, that are used in different fields. So um, we'll mosey on to our next, next uh, presenter. <laughs>